the accessory that turned fitness into a lifestyle has struggled on Wall Street. Can innovation and effort get the stock moving? At what point do we say that Fitbit, the leading maker of wearable fitness trackers, has just gotten too cheap to ignore? Fitbit came public roughly a year ago, and while the stock initially surged higher in its first month and a half of trading, the darn thing's been in the doghouse ever since, plunging from highs of 51 bucks last August to where it is today. Now, Fitbit's reported four quarters as a public company, and each time, each time, they massively beat Wall Street's top and bottom line estimates. But then they paired it with some guidance that people found disappointing. And because investors care about the future, not the past, the stock has consistently gotten battered each time. However, with Fitbit now trading at nine, nine times next year's earnings estimates, despite posting 50% revenue growth in its most recent quarter, you gotta wonder if the stock's just too darn hated. Throw in the fact that the company's been breaking into the corporate health and wellness market, where they help businesses save money on health care costs by encouraging employees to get more exercise, and I can see why someone might be tempted to pick at this. But Wall Street remains very skeptical, which is why the stock is so heavily shorted and why it got slammed again today after a negative piece of research from Pacific Crest suggesting they're seeing declining demand for some of Fitbit's newer devices. Could it be that the consensus has just gotten too skeptical? Let's sit down with James Park, the co-founder, chairman, and CEO of Fitbit, to try to make some sense of this story. Mr. Park, welcome back to Mad Money. Thanks, Jim. All right, James, uh, there is a sense, no matter what, I think, that people say it's peaking. Now, I mean, you can't just go on and on and have something peak and uh, people say peak, 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 and it never peaks. There's clearly something going on that's larger than what these people are thinking. Yeah, there's a couple things. I mean, right now it's year nine for the company. Uh, it's a long history of us having executed year after year. And if we just look at one factor in our growth, international, um, U.S. continues to grow. But if you look at our international numbers, they're amazing. And international still only represents 20-something uh, percent of our revenue. If you look at peer companies, you know, a lot of our peer companies, their international revenue is 50 percent or more. So just on that factor alone, it shows that we have a lot of headroom in our consumer business. Well, let's talk about what uh, it's called the attach rate, that what you would index with. I mean, it is more cell phone than it is just pure athletic tracker. Totally. I mean, this is a connected device market in a health and fitness category. So looking at it as an attach rate to smartphones is, is a great uh, way to look at things. And if you look at it, potentially a 20 to 30 percent attach rate, I mean, that's potentially 200 to 300 million devices uh, in this market. And that's been recently confirmed. I think IDC just right. came out with a report saying they think there can be over 200 million wearable devices sold by 2020. Now, one of the things that you have not done that others have is say, listen, we're uh, You've not said, we're a health and wellness company. You said, listen, we can be one. But as things develop, it's beginning to happen. There, there are peer review. There's papers. There are empirical evidence now that you're actually saving lives and money. Absolutely. We've been at the um, enterprise health market for many, many years now. So it's just now that we're starting to see a lot of concrete data come from our efforts. We just launched uh, what we call Fitbit Group, Group Health at our Captivate B2B Summit recently. Mm -hmm. Um, over 300 attendees from a lot of the leading health systems, employers, et cetera. And some of the stats that came out of that summit are incredible. So, for instance, uh, McKesson saved over $7 million a year through their wellness programs. McKesson is one of our customers. Mm -hmm. BP America shaved 3.5% off their healthcare costs with their wellness programs. BP America is a key customer of Fitbit for over three years now. So, these are some of the stats that are coming out of our enterprise business. Why do those stats, do you think, trump uh, things like uh, how many discounts there are at different stores that people go to or how often you're searched? I mean, these have been the kind of Mickey Mouse reasons that people have been using to sell Fitbit stock. Yeah, I think it's because a lot of our revenue comes from the consumer business today. Right. So actually, I think it's natural for people to focus on that. But look, we're a long-term business, we're a long-term play. And I think the early indications and data show that group health is going to be an incredibly important part of our business. I mean, one concrete data point, other than the savings that these corporations are seeing, is look how many um, peer-reviewed uh, research studies and papers that Fitbit is part of. Right now, there's over 100 studies that we're a part of. One big one was Dana-Farber Cancer Institute. Actually, they're studying to see if Fitbits can be used as an integral part of programs that help reduce the recurrence of breast cancer. So that's huge. 
Right. Now, we can't make any promises on that, obviously, and you've been very clear about that, too. You've never said there's a necessarily a linkage uh, to be able to stop breast cancer, stop anything. But you have stated over and over again that as you get more and more data, you will switch over in the minds of investors. But what percentage right now is health and wellness versus just the conventional people who want it? Uh, right now, our group health revenue is less than 10 percent of our See, business. That's, that's but, what I think. Yeah. But look, um, we have over 1,000 enterprise customers that we've added over the past two years. We've made big investments in that business. So look, again, this is a long-term vision that we have for the transformation of the company. Aren't you surprised that each time someone puts up a straw man, you were supposed to be destroyed by jawbone. Then I think it was Nike who was supposed to kill you, and then Under Armour was supposed to bury you. Uh, how's your share of this market coming versus these others? Look, we're still the leader in this category. Um, you know, a lot of, you know, depending on the research reports, we're always still number one. Right. And if you look at, you know, one great example is our Fitbit Blaze product. I think right. at CES, um, consumer reception was great, investor and press reception less so. But I think right. even the numbers there proved out our vision for that product. It's the number one selling smartwatch on Amazon and holds five out of the top ten spots. So again, look, it's been our vision, our execution over the years that's kept us in this leadership position. Now, one of the things, you, there's a person I like very much as a CEO, doesn't come on the show, killing me that she does, Laura Albert. Um, wouldn't join the board, presumably, unless she felt that there was something more than just a one year up and then the rest of the time some sort of decline. No, we just added Laura Albor. We added Glenda from Whole Foods Market. Right. These are incredibly, uh, you know, amazing professional executives. I mean, we talked to them extensively. Uh, we're very lucky to have these two women on well, our board. Well, it's not just, I mean, they, look, these are people who don't need to attach themselves to you. No, they don't. I mean, they're right? passionate they about the future of, of this category. Right. And I think that that's the way it, I know I feel about it, and so far, like I said, I've been wrong. But I'm willing to be wrong until the big payoff. Thank you so much to James Park, Fitbit co-founder, chairman, and CEO. Mad Money's back here for the break. Booyah! Jim Cramer here from Mad Money. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube. Click here to subscribe and get the jump on my exclusives with CEOs, plus market news, investing advice, and a whole lot more.